Hello, welcome to ZimDocs. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this docs we're going to take a look at squiggles and blobs. Let's go to the Zim site now, zimjs.com, and I've actually opened up a bunch of examples of blobs and squiggles that we have here. Here is a dancing blob. A blob is a shape that changes, uh, has curves to it. These are Bezier curves. Uh, there they are, and these Bezier curves are being animated as opposed to letting the user uh, operate them. A squiggle is something like that. There's a squiggle. These little guys are squiggles. <laughs> I wonder why there's only that many squiggles. <laughs> Let's refresh this. Uh, I have a whole bunch of these things open. Uh, there we go. So there's a bunch of squiggles that are being animated along a blob. And these blobs, though, uh, can be controlled by the, the end user Whee! to make these uh, squiggles go into different places. Cool, huh? Whoa. Look at that. And this has hundreds of, of likes here on on code pen, so that's cool. Here's a blob -atar, and this was us just uh, letting people say, hey, you can make a blob -atar. Look at this. There's an eyeball. I'm a blob -atar. And by the way, you can add points to the edge uh, as well, and you can remove points with the holding down the shift, so I just remove that point. And so there's all sorts of things that the end user can do. This one, refresh here, made a mustache. And so we drew a long line of a squiggle. Let's do that again. Like so. Ooh, nice. Here's a spark along a path. So if I pull that uh, match up, look at that. It's, it's making a spark along that path. So we're animating a pen along the path. The pen is black, and we're animating a particle emitter, which is that. Cool. Uh, this one is asking you to make a whale shape. So we're taking a squiggle. This is a squiggle. If it's not enclosed, it's a squiggle. And then try and make a whale shape out of this. <laughs> yes, here's my whale. All right, this is my whale. To do bump like that. And uh, there we go. Now we have a blob. So what it does is it converts a blob into that. You may notice the different colors, the different colors for the different type. If we double click this, it becomes a point. If we double click again, then it becomes a mirrored point. If we double click again, then it's called straight, where it keeps it straight, but it's not mirrored. Double click again, and we're back to our yellows, which allow us independent action to make our whale. Do you see the whale now? It looks like a whale, I swear. Here we have an animated pink blob, oh my word, and a bunch of things to do with squiggles. Uh, here we are animating along squiggles. We This is a, a path, and we can animate along a path. Do we see that already? Yeah, kind of. This is stuff animating along the path, which is editable, this path. You can also drag along a path. So here we are dragging along a path. There's the path. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And if we want, we can pull that, and then it animates along. Note that it goes off into the distance. So there's all sorts of really cool things to look at in Zim Neo, it's called. That's this site right here. So have a good look at how we work with paths. We're even introduced Pizzazz 4, which gives us a menu of different things that we can pick. This just got started. I only spent a little bit of time making a few of these. Some, uh, some folks in Zim made a few, and same with... Uh, same with this one. <laughs> I like the wild. One. I think the wild was what we used for the, the fuse. And you can check out the code for that. <laughs> maybe maybe a simpler code. Uh, you can adjust this code, shift things. But now there's transform, so you can transform these blobs and squiggles. There, so move their points or scale them all up without actually scaling the Bezier handles that are on them. So if you just take the squiggle and scale it, these guys scale as well, and that's not good. But if you transform points and say scale twice, then it will get twice as big in the points, but the Bezier points won't get bigger. Oh, what fun. All right, so that was that. Uh, here is animating blobs as well for a light show. Isn't that cool? And we've got some sound if we pull it in. And now we're using Zim Soundwave to animate that to the sound. Put that sound on pause. And then these are showing that we can animate the colors of blobs as well, and squiggles and other shapes as well. So we're, we're animating the colors. <laughs> we can make 
fine drawings here. <laughs> oh my, what have we got going on? I, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> All right, so those are the examples for the blobs and squiggles that I wanted to show you. Don't, 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 oh, goodness gracious. And then what we want to do is go into the, the docs here and have a look at the docs. So we scroll on down, here's squiggle. Squiggle comes first. The color, the thickness, the points. Now you can pass in a number of points. Why don't we make a basic squiggle? Do I have my docs open here? Yeah, that's a circle. We were working in circle. I'll leave that, make a new file. File new, we'll call this one file save. <laughs> we save it. Where am I? I'm in my code. I want to be in my docs. Oh, A, B, C, D. There it is. I should have had this ready for you. So what we're trying to do is make an example for each of the docs. They'll end up being here. Maybe we'll post this, uh, but really they're simple examples usually coming from the docs themselves. And we'll call this one squiggle.html. Enter. Once we do that, we just type in template and it pulls up a zim template. That was the last edited back in 10 point whatever. So we will call this squiggle and blob like that. And are you ready? A new squiggle. Isn't that fun? Dot center on the stage. Oh, that capital R always gets me. I head towards those brackets too quickly. So we are now centering a squiggle on the stage. What will we see? Open in browser. Squiggle on stage. There's that squiggle. But if we want, we can say, hey, please start with more points. So that would be points colon eight. Eight points. And see what that looked like. Refresh. Now we get a squiggle with eight points. And you can say how big this squiggle will be. You can specify other things about it as well. Now this points can pass in um, any number of points. For instance, remember our Zim Neo? Darn, did I close that? Okay, let's open it up. Zim site. If we go under examples and hit Neo, we can then wait for the pizzazz to show up. Animation getting in the way. We can go to the menu and I don't know which one do you like. There's some letters. How about this one? The jumping jack. We will get the code for that right there. Copy and come on back to here and say, all right, we want the points to be those points right there. And we save that and refresh here, somewhere along here, and there it is, refresh. And now we get the jumping jack squiggle. So that's how easy it is. You can just go in there and play with the squiggle and hit record. There's also a record, if we go back to the docs here, uh, we were looking at the points there, but just down below under the methods, methods, add point, add points, interpolate, record data right here, record data. Uh, if you record points with pop-up, I think that's what we want. Record points and pass in true, then it pops up a, a pane that gives you those points. So you can make any squiggle, pop it up and get and make that squiggle again. Squiggles can be saved really easily. They're part of the transform series. So when you transform a shape or do a blob or a squiggle, you can add them to the transform manager. And then you just give the transform manager an ID. That's all you need to do. And the next time somebody comes in, their squiggle will look like what it looked like before. That would be an end user. So really easy to allow people to draw with squiggles. And there's examples of that in here as well. There's that transform points, by the way, while we're at it. You can transform scale, rotation, and move without affecting the control size or the border width, that type of thing. Otherwise, if you did scale, you would also be scaling the size, the thickness of the squiggle. Now, what we're saying goes for blobs as well. Blobs and squiggles are almost exactly the same. The one thing is uh, squiggles have a thickness where a blob has a border width and a border color. Okay, and yeah, so there we go. So there's points. A default is four, but as it says here, let's zoom in on that, or an SVG path. So this is a path from SVG, and that's relatively new. We can pass that right into the points and create 
uh, a squiggle with Bezier curves from an SVG path, or an array of points as follows. So this tells you all of what that data was. It's the control X, the control Y, that's where with respect to the zero zero, the zero zero origin of the of the squiggle itself, which is in the center, uh, how far up and or sorry, how far over to the right and how far up are we or down? <laughs> I should say how far over to the right, how far down. And if it's negative, then it's to the left and up. Uh, the, the, this is the location of the circle inside. It can be moved, it's not usually. These are the rectangles that make those handles. So we can get those as well. And here's the control type. So there's a set of control types. And what are they? Let's see, here they are, control types. None, so that would be like a point. Mirror, uh, we talked about that, straight, free. And you can specify uh, them for each one if you so desire. Okay. There's the length of those sticks too, so you can specify that. Or is it this one? Oh yeah, that's the length of the whole squiggle. And here's the control length. With a blob, you get a radius instead of a length, so something slightly different. The control lengths, by the way, except ZimV, anytime in the docs you see the ZimV, you think magic. What that means is it doesn't have to, they don't have to all be the same. They could be a series. You could go from small to bigger to bigger to bigger to bigger to bigger to bigger. bigger. You can go random and get these random blobs all of a sudden start showing up. That's what we did with the dancing blob. We can just pass in things. We could pass in ones to pick from. So you could pass, if you pass in an array here of 10 and 30, then it would make the sticks, some of them would be 10, some of them would be 30 that type thing. So that's ZimV, very powerful to make dynamic parameters uh, for these types of things. You can choose to show the controls, uh, lock the controls, uh, lock the control types, <laughs> um, allow the toggling between controls, move the, the blob. So all those things are true falses as to um, how you want people to be edit, able to edit or not edit the squiggles and the blobs. In the end, it became tricky to make these not interactive because you had to turn each one of these things off. It was powerful, yes, and flexible, yes, but just a bit annoying. So we ended up adding an interactive parameter right here. The interactive parameter defaults to true, but if you set this to false, it turns all that stuff off. And that makes it just a little bit easier if you don't want people playing with your blob. <laughs> or squiggle. <laughs> if you don't want them playing with your blob and squiggle, then don't be interactive. Uh, we can style these things as any of the uh, shapes and uh, components and so forth. The display objects can be styled as well. So you could make seven squiggles and you could turn them all red by saying a squiggle color red. And same with interactive, you could choose them all interactive, false right away. And, and basically what you end up doing is just adding a bunch of squiggles, new squiggle, new squiggle, new squiggle, new squiggle. And hey, uh, you can position them like that. And when you position them, you can position them with a series. So you, you don't even need to add any parameters to the squiggle. You could do it all with styles. And that's the same with any of the things that we're dealing with Zim. So check out Zim style for that type of thing. Um, what else? Yeah, this has been a bit of a whirlwind. We're all back and forth all over the place. We have just recently made it so that you can add points with code. And we've just recently made it. Let's swap up the squiggle here for a blob. A blob. And we'll remove these points. Make it just a basic blob centered. Talk a bit about adding points. So that's here. Refresh. There's the blob. And what we've just recently done is when you click like that, you get a point. Now, I don't know if you noticed when you click, I missed, when you click the edge, it comes up. It may not get exactly where you click, but it's, it's pretty close. What it does is it, is it puts a series of like 20 points here and figures out which one it's closest to. But look at that. It doesn't change a lot. Let's do that again. If I press here, I'm adding points. But look, the blob is still the blob shape. So that's relatively new, I mean, as expected. We used to have it where you could click and you could click anywhere and it would add a point that uh, had no control points. So uh, it would change the shape of the blob a little bit, but then you could choose to change the, go through the control points. It would be like sort of getting like that. 
and you would have to change those. But it would also add points in the middle, so you could click anywhere in the middle and it would add a point. You can still get that by saying, oh, I don't know, edge colon false or something. It's an edge parameter now, colon false. And you can see that in the docs, which are where? Ha! Ed, you know, that's edit points. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. I think we forgot to add the edge to the um, edit points squiggle. Hmm. Oh, the squiggle doesn't have an edge. It is only an edge. So the edge is only available on the blob. <laughs> where, where is it on the blob? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I think it's there. <laughs> but we can assume it's there. Yes, uh, where did our stuff go? Do, 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 points, 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 edit points, style, edge. Where the heck? Oh, edit points, right, okay, no problem. Set to anywhere to let the users, so by default it is on the edge. That's right, we were going to add an edge parameter, but then realized, oh, heck, it's the same thing. This is, we can edit the points if that's true, and they'll be on the edge. If you set edit points to anywhere, then it allows you the, the user to put their points anywhere. So that's the old way. However, the old way was sort of like a temporary. We kind of knew, hey, that's not usually how editing tools uh, work. But this, this is tricky stuff, this uh, pretty tricky stuff to be able to work with Bezier curves. And, and that's what we've gotten ourselves into. I can't believe it. Um, and as far as I know, we're really the only library out there. Paper PaperJS has Bezier point workings as well. And yeah, maybe that it does. Um, but I think we're a little bit ahead of them with respect to some of the things. And they're ahead of us with respect to actually working with points and lines as, as custom classes. Like they're, they're, that's what they were built. They were built from Ill Illustrator. So they sort of grew up from there. However, we're doing well ourselves and we have other wonderful experiences like animating and dragging along these paths and, and, and that kind of stuff that I don't think um, paper has yet. So we've just added these add points, so you can do that with code as well. For instance, if we look at that blob again, there's the blob dot center dot add points. If we add, well, let's just add one point. This adds one point in between each of the, the blob things that are there. So when we refresh here, refresh, it's now more than it was before. See, these, these ones have been added into the, the middle of the, so you can increase the number there. We also have hit tests on blobs and squiggles now, so check that out. Uh, we will get that into the documentation, hit test path it's called, and you can do hit tests against the curves of these. And how that's happening is it adds a bunch of little dots here, or a bunch of places that it's checking for a hitting of a, of a shape. Much like hit test circle does that, hit test rectangle it puts points around the shape. Well now, even if the blob is point, you know, made like this, then it'll add points around here and you can test to see if the shape is hitting this weird looking shape. So that's pretty cool. That's done through the interpolate, interpolate there. Uh, record data, set data, we talked a little bit about those things. Updates. Sometimes if you're animating a blob, if you are physically or if you with code specify where a blob point is going to go or the angle or the angle of the, the controls or anything like that, the size of the rectangles or the length of the, the handles, that kind of thing, then you would need to update the blob. So if when you remember that animated blobs like moving around in a ticker we're saying blob dot update blob dot update or squiggle dot update squiggle dot update and that's with the update method you can show or hide controls you can also run toggle so most things that have controls can also be toggled back and forth this is uh, stuff for animating colors you can get segment points most of these things where we're getting curve points and that allows you to find a point on the curve at a certain percentage. Those were used internally, but we also let you use them in case there are things that you want to do with respect to that. All right, properties. Oh, I think we're just about done. You can read through those. There's the points property gives you the array of the points. Oh, maybe we should just mention uh, points is the original point setting. 
whereas point controls here, uh, or actually point objects, gives you an array of the actual Zim objects that make up this. So the whole control container, the circle, the whole, these rectangles, those are rectangles and circles in Zim. Whereas points itself, they're just X and Y's of where these things are. Points would get passed in as a parameter, uh, or you can sort of uh, find them, you can adjust them and send them back in as a parameter, where point objects you're using only to control the things that already exist. I don't know if that's clear. Uh, because point objects were a little bit tricky, if you wanted to get the controls, you, it was a double array. You would have to find out which point and then get the zero element to get the control and then do something with it. Uh, what we did there, uh, what we did after that is broke it down. So point controls array allows you to just say, what are the point controls at zero? And that gets you your controls at zero. And same with circles. If you want the circles at zero, there you go. You've got these two quicker arrays without having to do a double array. <sighs> Sticks, last section, types, allow, toggle, write some properties and various events. There's a change event when you move the and move the sticks change event and that should be good i suppose for squiggle and blob woohoo we were looking at blob right this is blob and squiggle like i said much the same the two of them that uh, will be good enough for now as you can see blobs and squiggles are a huge thing uh, as mentioned we can now uh, do hit tests on them and put more points around them. We can also put text, uh, like a label, label on a path. So we can have a squiggle and put text along that label path or along the blob. You may have seen that when Blobatar, oh, you didn't see it when Blobatar first started up because it was hidden, but and when it first started up, it says the word Blobatar around the edges of the blob. So that's pretty cool, and that's dynamic. So people can move that, and the text actually will move with the blob and squiggle. Woo-hoo! I'm out of breath, and it is also nap time or dinner time. I'm not sure. So off I go. Maybe both. Yes, dinner and a nap. Sounds good. Have a great time working with blobs and squiggles. I think they're one of the most wonderful things in Zim. They're very magical, and uh, people like them too, especially kids, uh, to make shapes and so forth. Ciao for now. Come on, visit us at zimjs.com slash slack and say hello. I am Dr. Abstract for ZimDocs.